thank you, John. And thank you, Vicki. You guys are just a great blessing. You, know? you see the way that they're in harmony together. It's biblical, you know, the two will become one. So praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. What a blessing. Uh, we're preparing for Christmas. How many know we should prepare for Christmas every day? Amen. Amen. I love this time of the year, but sometimes you get so busy that it, it drives out the purpose of sitting before the Lord and uh, recognizing the majesty and the awe of Almighty God. To see Jesus high and lifted up. You mind if we lift up Jesus today? That we praise His name? You know, Sometimes with all the hustle and the bustle and the things, the, the running and gathering gifts and going to and fro, we get so busy and we miss the whole meaning of Christmas. And so this week I was uh, just pondering and sitting a few minutes before the Lord and just thinking about uh, our salvation, the gift that we have, the greatest gift of all. And I've been talking about gift giving and that sort of thing this morning, and, and those things are important. But if we miss the majesty of the Almighty God and the Lord Jesus Christ, we miss the direction and purpose of everything. Reminds me of a, a woman, she was a grandmother, she had 17 uh, great grandchildren and grandchildren. And, uh, she, every year, would buy them gifts, and she would get so frustrated in the sense she'd have to go to this store for that one, to that store, the other one. She said, I'm just going to put a check and a card and send it to them. My grandchildren or my great-grandchildren. She wrote out the cards, and she put in there, buy your own gift. The problem was, she forgot to put the check in. <laughs> Could you imagine getting that? <laughs> Why would those things happen, right? We get so busy with running to and fro and we lose the focus of what it should be about. Amen? We're going to go back 2,700 years to the book of Isaiah in chapter 40 today. <clears throat> And we have the blessing of looking back, amen? As they were looking forward, we're able to look back and see what God has already done. But how many know that God is still doing something? He's doing a new thing, and there's something we can look forward to in the future. He has, he has come, praise the Lord for that, but He is coming again. And that's why we have a great expectation and anticipation of our Lord coming again. As you anticipate Christmas this year, we, we prepare in certain ways. We prepare by meditation. We prepare by reading His Word. We prepare by prayer. We prepare by being united with one another and building one another up in the most holy faith. We prepare by searching our own hearts and making room for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You remember when Jesus was born in Bethlehem, they had no place for Him. There was no room. And I ask you this morning, do you have room for the Lord in your heart? Have you prepared <coughs> a place for Him? And you think about preparing a place for a great king to come and to reside. And when you have guests this holiday season, their Christmas season, you think about uh, getting the home ready, don't you? You think about cleaning out some things and uh, preparing menus and all these things because you want to cater to your guests. Get rid of some of the clutter that might be in the front door. And, because you want to make your guests feel welcome. Think about where Jesus resides in our hearts. Amen? And so we can prepare for him by getting rid of the clutter. Getting rid of those things that will cause our minds to be 
set on things of this world that instead of the things that are above. That's one of the ways we are able to prepare. I want to read from Isaiah 40, just verses 3 through 5. And it says here that the voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. And the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Father, we do pray, Lord, give us an understanding this morning. Help us to hear thy word. Send it forth, O God. Challenge us, Lord, this morning. Comfort us. Give us direction. And Lord, we'll thank you and we'll praise you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. As I said, we travel back 2,700 years and here Isaiah is prophesying a time when comfort will be brought to Israel. They were going through challenging times. They had invading and pending armies that brought a nation that was free into exile, into bondage. And you could correlate that with our lives as when we were separate from the life of Christ, we were in bondage to the things of this world. We were bound over to sin and we had no hope. And Israel had no hope. So the prophet Isaiah was saying, comfort, comfort ye my people. He says, there is a way. And someone is saying, prepare the way. The Lord is coming. And if you know New Testament scripture, this word reflects back to John the Baptist. John the Baptist, if you remember, was the forerunner of Jesus Christ. He was Jesus' uh, cousin, per se, in the natural realm. But he was the one that was in the desert that was hollering, prepare the way for the Lord. And as he cried out into the desert, uh, to those that were walking in darkness, that they will see a great light, and that light is Jesus. And in this text here, that the exile of uh, Israel that had no hope, God was giving them a message that there's a coming hope. And aren't you glad that we can look back as they had to look forward? Uh, we can look back that Jesus has already come, amen? And aren't you glad that he has come and rescued his people that were held in bondage? He says, comfort those. And he says in this that he's going to come not as a ruler that's going to have uh, um, rule with an iron scepter, but he's going to come gentle. Look at verse 10 and 11. It says, behold, the Lord will come with a strong hand and his arm will rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him and his work before him. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom. And he shall gently lead those who are young. Aren't you glad that we have a great shepherd? Amen. Aren't you glad that we have one that doesn't count our sins against us? Aren't you glad that we don't have to pay the sin debt? Aren't you glad that he comes to comfort us at this time of the year? That there is forgiveness. And God wants us to know he doesn't come uh, ruling and uh, speaking down unless he comes gentle as a shepherd to his sheep. Aren't you glad that we have the gentle shepherd, amen? The comfort of us. I thought of a couple of ways where in verse 3 says, prepare the way for the Lord. You heard it said that Christmas is for children. And you're absolutely right because that can First, with what the scripture says, Jesus says, unless you become like a little child, see, you'll never see the kingdom of God. 
And what is a little child? A little child has great dependence. A little child has reverence and awe. A little child sometimes sees for the first time. I remember thinking back uh, when I was small and Christmas time came around, there was just great expectation. You see, there was just there was this wonder and awe that as I grew, I started to lose that. I started to uh, reason with things. I started to try to figure things out in my intellect. And Jesus says, unless you become like a, a, a little child again, you'll never see the kingdom of God. And how is that? We have to become like a child because we put our dependence on what God says. We can't wrestle with God's word and then take uh, half of it and throw the other half away. There are many who do that. How many know that we have to take the full counsel of the Word of God? From Genesis to Revelation, all Scripture has been God-breathed, and it's, and it's useful for us to teach us, to correct us, to rebuke us, to train us in righteousness. Everything that was written in the past was written there to teach us, to give us endurance, to give us uh, an encouragement, and give us hope. You see, I don't know about you, but don't you need hope? Mm -hmm. You look around in this world, the hope can get drawn right out of you. But when I read the pages of Scripture, and I think of the majesty of Jesus, His great love for us, and the wonder of it all, the majesty of it all, the childlike faith to believe in every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, all things become new again. Hallelujah. And I pray and hope that for you. That through all the hustle and the bustle and the noise and the tinsel and those things that go on during this Christmas Eve, you will see Jesus high and lifted up. Your Messiah, your Lord, your Savior. Praise His holy name. So yes, Christmas is for children. My friends, let's get back to the place of seeing the majesty of Jesus with a childlike faith, walking in the joy. Do you remember being a child? Do you remember not having a care in the world? The, the world can be falling down all around you. What is it today? And I'll tell you what it is. It's an illusion that you think you can control it anyway. You think you can control everything around you, and it's just but an illusion. And if we would just trust God and know certain things, the joy would flood back in. I don't know what may be pressing in on you. Maybe it's money because it's Christmas time and there's so many gifts to buy and so many things to do and those pressures come in. Do you know that that chokes the Word of God out? Do you know you find in Mark 4 and you look at verse... Uh, 14, it said that the things of this world, the desires for the wealth and those things, check and choke God's <laughs> word right out. So you can't even enjoy God's presence because you're bound down over with those things. How about we just let go and let God, amen? How many know that they're going to work out anyway? How many know that God is in control anyway? And when you try to control some things, you're just losing your own joy. I'll figure it out. I'll, I'll do this. I'll do that. I had uh, great stress in my own life. Don't think that, that I can stand up here and I'm uh, relieved of it. I had great stress this past week of trying to figure some things out. The other church, we bought a new projector, and I was trying to figure out the... Uh, I'm not that savvy with those things, and so the pressures of doing that, and, and just one thing after another was starting to pile up on me this past week, and I believe God was trying to teach me something, you know, and when I finally, last night, just gave it all to Him, guess what, everything else worked out, just boom, 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 it all went into place like this. But when I was trying to control these different aspects of what was going on in my own life, it was a frustrating thing because uh, I thought that it was an illusion that I had control of them. And, and don't sit there and think that you don't do that. <laughs> we all go there, don't we? We all go there at times. And sometimes worse than others. So we got to come back and be like children, dependent on our Heavenly Father. Amen? Amen. And, and 
and seeing the majesty again of, of who Jesus is. And uh, again, I would think about, you know, as you drive around and you see the lights, you see the candles, and you see, you know, what does that remind us of? You know, uh, those that were walking in darkness have seen a great light. Uh, Jesus said that I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Praise the Lord. So when you see light and you re reflect on all those Christmas bulbs and uh, you, like I can just sit there and stare into them for a while. You would think I'm strange, right? You know why? Because I'm, I'm thinking about the great light that we've seen in Christ that brightened all the dark spots in my life that, that has taken me and redeemed me from darkness and brought me into his wonderful light. Do you know that when you're in sin, you're in darkness? Do you know that when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you cross over from darkness to light, from death to life? Praise the Lord. Amen. You see? So when you see that light, when you see the great light, praise the Lord. And you're reflecting on your salvation. Glory to God. How great is this salvation? And the Lord has given us a way to walk. Uh, he calls it the road of, uh, or the way of holiness. And he talks about that the redeemed will walk there. And what a blessing that would be. There would be no ferocious wolves or, or lions up there on the way of holiness. But it would be a place up where our foot is firm and where our God is at. His presence. And he has given that to us. So as you look at this verse, we prepare the way for the Lord. We make straight. We make straight. Away in the desert. Uh, <clears throat> there's a dry and weary land out here in this earth, isn't there? It, as you know that there's no water to quench your thirst. And what I mean by that is the Holy Spirit. There's, there's no, there's no uh, everlasting quench for your thirst that this world can give you, my friend. Only... The power of God can quench your thirst and give you the desires of your heart. And as we prepare for the Lord and we make way, the highway for our God, how is that? What does is, what is a, a way look for uh, uh, in, in your life? You know, the church was called followers of the way, right? Jesus is what? The way, the truth, and the life. We, we follow the way. And when we follow the Lord, you know, that is making straight your path, is it not? When you follow your own way, or, or should I say, your own direction, what is it? I should say, how, did, how does that, that grab you? How does that make it in? You know, I, that's what I was doing this past week. I was trying to figure things out in my own strength, my own. That didn't work out too good. When I go to, when I have direction in God's word, it is the way. I'm making straight the way, my friends, and I gather great peace for that. He says every valley uh, will be exalted. You know, where, where you've been in the pits of life and where you've been uh, down and downcast, uh, they will be lifted up, praise the Lord, when you see him high and lifted up. How many has been in a rut? You know that that makes a valley? A rut. The Lord said, you've been going around this mountain long enough, friend. <laughs> he told the Israelites that, remember? They were just walking around the mountain, around the mountain. Have you been going around the same old mountain year after year, day after day? See, God wants that filled in. He wants your way straight. He wants you to see Him clearly. You see? You can't see clearly when we're in those ruts and we're in those dark places, can we? You can't see beyond it, beyond the valley. Fill in the valley. He says that every mountain and hill will be made low. What a blessing, amen? How many mountainous things are you facing that look monumental today? How many things look like, a, like an obstacle that will never be removed? Have you facing any of that? Maybe it's a, a, you know, an infirmity. Maybe it's some of the things you've been hoping for. They, they just seem impossible. How many know that 
all things are possible with God. Amen? Amen. Amen. He says, if you say to the mountain, be removed, they shall be removed. Amen? Because why? Not because I have any power in my tongue or my word, but because of what the Lord says. Amen? And I may not see it physically move, me, but believe me, <coughs> God is on the move. Hallelujah. God can move mountains. What a wonderful thing that is, you know, to recognize and realize again during Christmas that God can move mountains. He can bring them low so that we're able to go beyond them. So many times that we can't see the Lord because of the mountain before us. And do you think that we cause maybe molehills to be mountains? I know Satan has a magnifying glass. Do you know that? Small little things in your life, he puts a magnifying glass on it makes it look like a mountain. But how many know there's nothing impossible for God? God is able to take the mountain and remove it in a moment's time. Praise the Lord. And I want you to see that. I want you to know that, you know, Christmas is the time of miracles. Not that God doesn't do the miracles all year. And I think it's because we don't come alongside. We don't get in the way. We don't get in the, the, the same groove as where God is. Do you know that God is moving all the time? God is omnipresent. God is here. And yet at times we don't even experience His presence, nor do we expect His presence, nor do we... I could go on. He takes the mountains and brings them low. He wants us to be childlike. He wants us to do everything without arguing and complaining. You look at the book of Philippians in the second chapter, and I'll tell you why he says, he says, do everything without arguing and complaining so that you will be pure and blameless children of God in this corrupt generation. You'll be without fault. You'll be like a star that shines in the universe when we do those things. As we follow Him. I've noticed when the greatest times of joy are the greatest times where you're vulnerable for dissension. Think about it. It should be a time of great elation and joy in your house, but the pressures push some things out of you that, sh that shouldn't be in there in the first place. Amen? I always say this, if you got your hand caught in the door, what comes out? Jesus juice or other juices? <laughs> the pressures of life, right? It should be giving praise, right? But all these pressures coming in, if we see him, the one who brings down mountains, the one who makes way for us straight. Childlike faith, the light of the world, the gift given to us, the unmerited gift of the Lord Jesus Christ. This time during the Christmas season, when we fail to see God for who He is, we fail to see the generosity of our Lord and Savior. We fail to see that God is a giver, amen? For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. And you know, Jesus said it is better to give than to receive. And I know Christmas is all about gift what? I call it exchange. It's gift exchange if you really think about it. I gotta get this for so and so because so and so gets me that. It's about gift exchange. But what about giving without any expectation of return? How God has given to us the greatest gift of all his son, Jesus Christ. And it's an expression that we're able to give what has been freely given to us, to others. 
What a joy that will be. And we're able to exhibit that during Christmas time. Praise the Lord. To go and be generous to those maybe who aren't able to have a good Christmas. Maybe those that might not even have a Christmas meal. My friends, we live in America, but there's <coughs> many right here in America that may not have Christmas <coughs> this year. May not have, uh, how about the mother that doesn't have anything to give their little children to open up and to share the love of Christ with them this year. Yeah. So why I say that, you think of the Lord giving you the greatest gift of all, your salvation. Let us ex exhibit that during this time of the year. Let us be generous. Not because you want to be known as being someone generous, but because of who is in you. You bring that gift and you exhibit it. Christ's love, and you share the message of salvation. My wife always leaves at this point of the message. She does not like to hear me preach. <laughs> <laughs> I do have to explain something. She does go to the other church. And when she's not here at times, she's down at the other church. My wife has not missed the church service. She did once last year. <laughs> she does support her. Do you know, my friends, we are so thankful, we are so blessed, not only in this country, in this church, in this community, in our own houses, if you would see the Lord high lifted up, if you would see Jesus again, fresh, new, through eyes of faith and the eyes of a child. Remember, he's here to comfort you, to bring forth salvation. If you don't understand that we were dead in our transgressions and our sins, there was nothing that we could do. We were separated, separated from Almighty God. And God gave his son so that he would reconcile sinful humanity. And through our faith and trust, what Jesus had done for us on Calvary 2,000 years ago, shed his blood, took our punishment, and we ask for forgiveness. We are forgiven, and therefore we should have great joy and elation. The grace that has been bestowed upon us let us exhibit that this Christmas, but all 365 days of the year. When I remember how fresh the day was that I was born again. Friend, if you can't remember back, maybe you don't remember the day, but you ought to remember where you were. And what I mean not at the, the physical place but where you were are separate from the life of God, walking in that darkness. And if you don't, guess what? Let today be the day of your salvation. Let this be the moment right here that God brings you from darkness to light, from death to life. Let this be the day. Let this be the greatest gift receiving day of salvation. We're going to close, and we have about a few more minutes. But I'd like to close with offering you to come to the altar, make a couple minutes with the Lord, and maybe we just need to settle some things with Him today. And if that's you, I, I would ask you to come up if you feel funny about coming to the altar and just sit in your seat. But I would like us to take a few minutes and just put our focus on the things of the Lord this morning. <clears throat> Again, to think of 
Jesus in a fresh way. Your salvation, the majesty of our Lord and Savior. Remember, whatever you're facing, whatever mountain that's before you, God can make it flow. God wants to make all things new. God wants to bring comfort to you today. He wants you to know that He is not against you, but He is with you. That He is your God. He says to those with fearful hearts, My God is with us. And as Father, as we take these moments, and we ask, O oh Lord, that we might start afresh. Give us a new, fresh look, Lord. Let us see through the eyes, even of a child, with great expectations, great joy. Thank <laughs> you.